Accused insurrectionist Senator Josh Hawley is all in on the minimum wage scheme, and recently he introduced an alternative to Democrats' proposal that would use federal dollars to increase the lower-earning workers' income. Hawley is breaking with the mainstream GOP views and suggesting um, that he believes that the federal minimum wage is too low which is a first, uh, to my knowledge, uh, that has come from a a Republican. Hawley's proposal uh, estimates that it would likely cost around $200 billion, uh, which is a figure, in my opinion, that is uh, sure to meet resistance from fellow Republicans. And Hawley says that he would support a $15 minimum wage for workers of large corporations that generate at least $1 billion in annual revenue. Um, this measure, according to Holly, uh, would also benefit low-wage workers who have been hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic. Overall, his proposal would amount to a three-year program that would increase worker wages in, in 2021. And it, subsequently, it would be funded by the taxpayers rather than uh, the employers. So what this plan entails is that workers uh, making below $16.50 per hour would receive a refundable tax credit that is worth 50% of the difference, and it would be paid out in quarterly installments. The $16.50 would uh, essentially increase over time, and it would be tied to the consumer price index. So you can see uh, an episode that I did on Biden's plan, uh, which uh, is more or less Bernie's plan. Uh, I will post a link uh, to, the, uh, uh, to that episode at the end of this video so you can check out uh, Biden's plan as opposed to what's in this material, in this episode. Um, Holly's plan sounds complicated already and here is an example of my apologies because it sounds even more complicated than holly's proposal but uh, let me do my best here Uh, let's just say that an american worker is making 12 dollars per hour then that worker would be eligible for a two dollars and 25 cents per hour credit so let's do some math here So let's take $16.50. We are going to subtract this by $12. And whatever amount we get, we're going to divide by 2. And that is how we arrived at the $2.25 per hour credit. The maximum credit that, um, the maximum credit would be for 40 hours of work per week or 2,080 hours over the course of a year allowing this full-time worker a total credit of $4,680 for the taxable year. So this worker can expect to receive four distinct payments of $1,170 from the IRS. Essentially, the credit applies only to 40 hours or less of work, a weekly work, and it is extended only to American workers with valid Social Security numbers, meaning that uh, non-U.S. citizens and undocumented immigrants would be totally excluded from this plan. So, so yeah, so uh, we are talking about uh, 40 hours or less of weekly work. So we have to, you know, really think about that. Uh, Holly's plan uh, could immediately be implemented in this 2021 tax year, and it would uh, subsequently expire in 2024. So uh, after 2024, the Democrats' plan would kick in, uh, which increases the minimum wage to $15 per hour, and it would be phased in by the year 2025. Um, Likewise, Biden has promised to promote a standalone bill to raise the minimum wage 
And uh, again, you can refer to the link at the end of this uh, particular episode. Um, unfortunately, the latest COVID-19 release bill does not include, um, or it, it, uh, they try to include a minimum wage increase, uh, but because of the politics surrounding and, uh, this and the way it was presented, uh, it, 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 it probably won't pass. Um, so let's go back to Holly. What Holly is saying uh, is that in his own words, and this is I'm quoting him directly, the bill is targeting folks who are making $34,000 to $35,000 a year and less. And again, this is him saying this. This is targeted towards people who have been the hardest hit, who are trying to get back on their feet. And furthermore, um, Holly um, acknowledges that, and again, I'm I'm quoting him, federal policy has helped create, over the last 30 to 40 years, flatline wages for blue-collar workers. And he adds, we need to have a broader discussion about a number of these policy choices. A lot of it has to do with our trade policies and the policies that we pursued with globalization that have been very bad choices. Uh, But now that we are talking about bad choices, uh, some of them were bad choices indeed. Um, Some of them were actually made by the Trump administration. Uh, If you remember, the Trump tariffs have already cost the U.S. households hundreds of dollars each year. So they, uh, they could take credit for that. There are foreseeable problems with this scheme. Um, this subsidy would disproportionately benefit those in states that have kept their minimum wages low. And not to mention that it's also an incredibly complicated bill, which could make it very difficult for workers to properly estimate their take-home pay. And never mind the accounting nightmare that it would present for the IRS. Um, Additionally, this would put the IRS in the middle of all of this. And just imagine the amount of burden that would be placed uh, on the IRS to oversee the magnitude of such accounting. It, It seems that somewhere down the line, there would have to be additional people hired by the IRS to disperse these checks and uh, not once, but four times a year. So this would be an, a monumental undertaking uh, for any government en- entity uh, to be able to do time and again. 